Oh, Princess on a Pillow here. I am here to do a review on Ready to Love, Season 5, Episode 4. It's titled Party Crashers. Let's get started. All right. Okay. We see the guys at the lounge with Tommy. Um, Tommy tells the men that a man and woman is going to crash the party. Tommy, he, for some reason, he really likes Wiley. So he tells Wiley that he is going to set him up with someone closer to his age. I think um, Tommy and Wiley, they're probably related because he just loves him. He loves him some Wiley. Anyway, Tommy tells them that the power to eliminate is back in their hands. I can't stand Tommy. He looks so happy when he says he's um, going to be eliminating a woman. And that's why I say they need two hosts. A woman for the to, um, to talk to the women and a man to talk to the men. Because he just, I don't know, he's just always on the men's side. He's biased towards the men. Okay, so Wiley goes on his blind date with, on the screen they said her name was Tina, but they keep calling her Christina. So I guess I'll call her Christina because everybody was calling her Christina. Okay, Christina is 31 years old. Um, she's an esthetician. Esthetician. I guess she deals with the um the dead people. She embalmed the dead people. And she has her tits out. And she has on this long black wig. And she's not bad looking in the face. Oh, I didn't put on any earrings today. Thank God. Anyway, in her confessional, she says she is a mother, a goddess, um, and an entrepreneur. And she looks like she's wearing brown contact lenses. But at least they're not blue, right? And she has gold sparkle all over her chest. What's that all about? I don't know. Is that the style now? It looks ridiculous, okay? She said her last relationship, in her last relationship, she got cheated on when she was six months pregnant. Anyway, she meets up with Wiley, and he seems to find her attractive. They hug, hello. She gives him a compliment before he gives her one. What's up with these women? As soon as they see these men, they're complimenting them. Let the men compliment you. Oh, yeah. She told him that his body looked amazing. But you know what? At least he complimented her back. He told her she looked good. He told her she looked like a caramel sundae. Um, she tells him that she has a two-year-old daughter. And she, um, she told him about her bad relationship with the daughter's father. Um, they talk about other stuff, but it wasn't interesting. So at the end of the date... Um, yeah, Wiley said he enjoyed the date, and at the end of the date, she gave him, she gave him her number. Next, we see Precious. She's going on her blind dates. Um, Precious said she's never been on a blind date before in her life. She said she's heard horror stories about blind dates. She said you may end up dating one of your cousins. And then we see her blind date walk in. His name is Donovan. He's 42 years old. He's a realtor. He said he's originally from Los Angeles, California. He said his grandmother taught him to be patient and kind. All right. So he meets up with um, Precious. They say their hellos. And Precious says in her confessional that Donovan exude sex appeal. That's all she has on her mind. Is sex, 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 sex. Anyway, um, Donovan is wearing a nose ring. Why is he wearing a nose ring? Um, he tells her that he has never been on a blind date. And she gives him a compliment. Why? And he did not compliment her back. In his confessional, he said she's beautiful and very tall. And then he said he's attracted to that. 
he told her that he he's been married for he was married for twelve years, and he basically said that the divorce was his fault. That means he he messed up. He cheated. That's what that means to me. He said he made mistakes. He says now he's looking for someone who's independent and is a team player. Who says that? Usually. When you, see, when you say, you ask somebody what they're looking for in a relationship, they say someone who's kind, nice, respectful. They usually say that. He says someone who's independent and is a team player. You know what that means to me? Someone who's independent means someone who has a job. Someone who's a team player means that they'll help him pay his bills. So he wants someone who has a job who will help him pay his bills. A team player. Get out of here. Okay, she tells him that she is ready to love and she has been single for nine years and celibate for six months. Why is she telling him that? That's TMI. Don't tell him that mess. She's something else. She told him that she hopes he likes tall women. He said they're the same height when they lie down. Say so she's something else. And she'll probably try to hold on to him because she has no connection with nobody else. She claims she liked Paul, but she does not like Paul. Nobody likes Paul. Anyway, she tells him that her senses are aroused. And I think her flirtation is turning him off. In her confessional, she said she was really feeling him, but she didn't think that he was getting what she was putting down. No, he, he didn't like what you were saying. You were too vulgar. Stop. That, he, he was probably scared. So they talk about sex before marriage. I don't know why he brings that up because she's being flirtatious with him. So you know she believes in sex before marriage. So I don't know why he brought that up. But they're on the same page with sex before marriage. And I just don't, um, I just don't think he's feeling her. In his confessional, he said she is a wild stallion that he does not want to tame. Okay, she told him that she wants to keep him all to herself, um, and she doesn't want to share him with the other ladies. Next, we see Laverne. Laverne sets up a date with Joy to do pottery. He says this is something she's into. Um, so when she shows up, they hug, and I hate her outfits. She's wearing these tight, these tights, and they just look disgusting to me. She's always wearing something tight and hu fear hugging. And it looked to me like if you sweat in something like that, it just just seems disgusting and funky to me. I just don't like those tight things she wears. Okay, apparently Joy does like pottery. Because in her confessional, she says that um, it, that means he's listening. So I guess she told him that she liked pottery and that's why he took her there. So kudos to Laverne for listening. But I don't think this will change anything. She still likes, um, what's that? What's that? Clifton. She's still head over heels for Clifton. So this is not going to change anything. So they sit down and they're doing their pottery and stuff. And they're competing with each other to see who would make the best pot or whatever they're making. And they seem to be having a good time. And Laverne asks her, what did she want out of this process? And here we go. She said she wants to be happy. Who doesn't want to be happy? Who doesn't want to be happy? Whether you're going through this process or not, everybody wants to be happy. I mean, she said she wants to be happy and share life experience with someone. She didn't say no marriage. She didn't say no kid. She didn't say no boyfriend. She didn't say no committed relationship. None of that. She wants to be happy and she wants to share life experience with someone. With someone special. And then she said she someone like a best friend. So that's what she wants. No commitment. No committed relationship. No marriage. No kids. No nothing. She just wants to be with somebody and hang out and have a good time. She's 41 years old. When is she going to settle down? Maybe marriage is just not in her plan and kids is just not in her plan. Because she likes being on the road. At age 41, she just wants to be on the road and she wants someone special in her life. And that's it. But anyway, they're flirting outrageously. They are outrageously flirting with each other. And I think it's disgusting the way they were flirting with each other. The things they were saying. Well, things she said. Anyway. And I think the only reason her name has not been put in the bottom when it comes to elimination is because half of the guys think she's attractive and the other half, they're probably afraid, afraid to um, put her, to say her name when it comes to elimination, you know, to put her in the bottom. 
I want her gone. And if she leaves, Clifton's going to leave because that's who, the only person he's feeling is, is Joy. And if he leaves, psh, I'm fine with that too. Anyway, they play around with each other and they seem to be enjoying themselves. Um, let's see where that leads, okay? Next, we see Demetrius. He meets up with AP at a restaurant. And she thanks him for setting up the date. Why are you thanking him for setting up a date? He should be thanking you for, for showing up to the date. Oh, thank you for setting up this date. No, don't thank you for setting up. He's the man. Let him le do the leading. Let him do the courting. Oh, I guess I'm just too old-fashioned. <laughs> I guess I'm just too old-fashioned. He should thank her for showing up. He should say, thank you for showing up, you know. That's what he should do. He, she shouldn't be thanking him for, you know what, okay. So, um, they're sitting down and they're talking. And AP is talking a whole bunch of stuff. I don't know what she's talking about. I don't even care what she's saying. I don't understand what she's saying. It doesn't make any sense. I just ignore what she was saying. I, I, I tuned out when she was talking. So, Demetrius, at one point, he asked her if she's affectionate. That's a dumb question. What woman is going to say, no, I'm not affectionate? Who's gonna say that? That's not, he, he, she was just yabby, 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 yabby. He didn't know what else to say. He's just trying to find things to say to her because he's not interested in her. He's interested in Sabrina. He's not interested in no AP. So she says, yes, I'm affectionate. And he doesn't believe her. He doesn't seem to believe her. He says, are you? <laughs> if she says she's affectionate, why are you questioning that? Anywho, uh, she told him about losing her husband. In his confessional, he said he didn't connect with her on a romantic level. <sniffs> Big whoop. We know that. You like Sabrina. You've liked Sabrina since the very first day. Okay, so next we see Tommy invites all the men to a beach clubhouse. Um, Eric, the chef, he's in the kitchen. He's you know, cooking it up. And the other guys, they're outside talking. And Demetrius is saying that when he was younger, he thought sex, he mistook sex for love, but now he wants a, um, a emotional connection. They're talking with each other and, you know, talking amongst themselves. Next thing you know, Tommy shows up and he pulls up in a sailboat. Or is it a yacht? One of them, I don't know. I don't know the difference. Sailboat sounds small. A yacht sounds more luxurious. It was, a, it was luxurious. So let's say a, let's, let's say a yacht. I don't know. What's the difference between a sailboat and a yacht? Let me know. Um, should I ask Alexis? Alexis, be. Alexis, what's the difference between a sailboat and a yacht? She's not speaking to me today. Alexa, what's the difference between a sailboat and a yacht? A sailboat or sailing boat is a boat propelled partly or entirely by sails and is smaller than a sailing ship. A yacht is a sailing or power vessel used for pleasure, cruising, or racing. It was neither. Just a damn boat. Let's just say a luxury boat. boat. You pull up in a luxury boat. All right. Okay. Uh, where was I? And I just can't stand Tommy. I cannot stand Tommy. He thinks he's all done in a bag of chips. Okay, so they have a live band. And show off Tommy. He's doing some weird jumping dance. He looked like a little frog. I don't know what he was doing. He's doing some little weird crazy dance. Um, so after he was done jumping around, Tommy, um, he calls all the ladies to come in. I don't know how, where they came from. They didn't come up, come in on a yacht or a boat. They just showed up. They, we just saw them walking in. And Tommy tells them that this is, this is it. He's not adding any more people to the mix. Thank the Lord. I'm so tired of him. Every week he adds somebody, a new man and a new woman. It's hard keeping track of these people, much less every week a new person. I'm so sick. I don't like this season. I don't like him doing it this season. I guess they're trying to change it up, mix it up. They can't think of anything else to do than this. 
don't add any more people. It's hard to keep track of these damn people. And the people coming in, they're not even... They're not anything... I shouldn't say that. That's mean. But I don't see anything wonderful about them. As soon as they come, they go. They come and they go. They come and they go. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so everybody's mixing and mingling. And um, the Kia talks to... Um, uh, the Kia talks to Donovan. She, yeah, the Kia talks to Donovan a little bit. And she thinks he's fine. Um, she told him she um, is ready to love and is looking for someone real. Um, he says that she is beautiful and she sparked his interest. Next we see Paul is talking to, um, what's her name? Tina, Christina, the new girl. And she's telling him that she always dated older men. And in his confessional, he said that she is a beautiful, gorgeous, young, attractive lady. He said he wants to get to know her better. And he tells her that they should talk outside of this. Um, he said in his confessional that, younger, that the younger they are, the more troubled they are. So why do you want to talk to her outside of this? If the younger they are, the more troubled they are. You should stay away from her then. So he tells her that she is definitely gorgeous and he would love to have a date with her. He is old enough to be her father. He's what he is. How old is he? He is at their age written down here. Paul is the oldest one there. He's 48 years old and Christina is, where is she? Oh, she's 31. So she's like 17 years old or something like that. Or she's old enough to be her father. When he was 17 years old, she was just coming into this world. Yeah. Anywho, where was I? Yeah, he's old enough to be her father. And I don't think she like him. She's just being nice to him because she wants to stay on the show. That's all. Nobody likes Paul. He's not likable. And she knows she knows a woman is going home today, so she's doing her she's doing what she's supposed to do. Anyway, Nakia is in the kitchen and she's talking to Eric. Um, and he's cooking. She's talking to him, he's cooking, and he gives her a compliment. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. The men need to they, they need to take note. Um, Eric says he feels a connection with um Nakia. He said the first date with her was like fireworks. So he's flirting with her. And he's fl flirting with her in a respectful manner. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. I like Eric, but Eric kind of seems a little feminine to me when he talks. So I don't know about that. I'm not saying... <laughs> I don't know. He just seemed a little feminine to me. I'm not saying he's, you know... I'm just saying he seems a little feminine. Okay. I wouldn't be attracted to that. He's cute. And he's nice the way he compliments her and, they, and they're flirting in a respectful manner. I like that. But he just seems, his voice maybe, I don't know, something about him seems a little feminine, feminine to me. Not like a, a more manly guy, you know? Um. Okay, so where was I? Where was I? Oh, they were enjoying each other. They were enjoying talking to each other, doing a little bit of flirting respectfully with each other. And then here comes Carmen. Carmen is the one that had the, had the blue contacts in. Um, she comes in and she, she starts touching. She touches Eric. She touches him. And she's talking to him. And the kid is standing right there. And the kid was not happy about that. Um, in her confessional, Carmen said she has her eyes on Eric. And said she, saw, she said she saw the kid talking to Eric. And she said it was time for her to move on. <laughs> Carmen said she saw the Kia talking to Eric and it was time for the Kia to move on. <laughs> Uh-oh. That's one little fight. There's two little, um, like, almost little fights going on. That's one right there between Carmen and um, the Kia over Eric. <clears throat> so the Kia said in her, her confessional that Carmen is going to manipulate things into her favor. So the Kia is worried that Carmen might, you know, snatch Eric's eye away from her. Uh, so the kid tells Eric to come find her later, and then she leaves out. 
And Eric told us, he told us that him and Carmen, they go back a ways. He said she had hired him before for a little gig. He didn't say a little gig. She hired him for a gig. And Carmen, um, him, him and her vibed for years, but never had a relationship or wanting to be in a relationship with each other. Um, but they do have an amazing time together. I don't understand that. If y'all know each other for years, she, you know, hires you and y'all hang out and y'all are vibing with each other and y'all have an amazing time together, how come y'all don't date? So now he's saying now it's time for him to explore that. Now, because they're there on the show, it's time for him to explore that. He's full of crap. He's not into her. And she's probably not into him either. Because they, if they were into each other, why haven't they hooked up before this? That doesn't make any sense to me. So Carmen asked Eric if he liked Nikia, and he said yes. I don't think he out and out said yes. He, he did say yes, but he didn't say yes. He said something else. Um, Carmen said to Eric, who is number one? And he told Carmen that she's number one. There's some bull crap going on. There's some bull going on. If she was number one, and if you've known her for all these years, why didn't you hook up with her? Or maybe you did, but you don't You don't want us to know that y'all hooked up. I don't know what's happening. Or maybe they came on the show together. What's going on? Something's happening there. I don't know. Anywho, Sabrina and Demetrius, um, they go off to talk um, with each other. In her confessional, Sabrina said that Demetrius grabbed her and pulled her to the side. And he that shocked her because that's out of the norm for him. Um, she said he usually doesn't do anything like this. In his confessional, Demetrius said he is going to let her know, let Sabrina know, that this is what he wants. That she is what he wants. Sabrina, um, they're talking and Sabrina told him that she was trying to make her way over to him, but he had all the girls around him. He told her he wants to see if he can build something with her. He told her that he wanted to pursue something with her. And she told him that she was happy to hear that and... Likewise, she wants to build something with him. In her confessional, she said this is the first step of him showing her that he's interested in her and she's happy about that. But um, Tori and her, they have an insane connection. This is not the first time he's shown his interest in her. The very first episode, he pulled her aside and they sat there and they talked and talked and talked and they talked about stuff. They didn't flirt with each other, talk about but they talked about their lives, and I can tell he was into her and she was into him. So what is she talking about? This is the first time he pulled her aside. No, he did it the very first episode. And right then and there, I can tell that they were vibing with each other. I don't think they're a good couple. I don't think they should be together. They, you know, she's saying that her and um Tori have an insane connection. I don't think either of them are good for her. One is too soft and one is too hard. I don't, I don't like them for her. And I don't think any of them are going to work out for her. So Precious tells Sabrina and Carmen, this is what we see next. Precious talking to Sabrina and Carmen, and she's saying that Laverne has been ignoring her like the plague. Um, Sabrina said he is not, she's, Sabrina tells her that he's been um, avoiding everybody. And then they show him, they, so, they show Laverne sitting off by himself. Just by, all alone by himself. Then the next scene, they show him sitting, you know, on his phone to show that, yeah, he is off by himself. He's not, you know, really um, interacting with anybody. Um, in her confessional, Carmen said that Laverne is being distant. Um, Carmen told Precious and Sabrina that she hasn't spoken to Laverne all day. And in her confessional, Precious says that Laverne has a godlike complex. <clears throat> she said um, she um, he wants women to come over to him. And from his body language, it looked like he, he didn't want to be there at the um at the mixer. And at one point, they showed Laverne talking to Demetrius. And uh, I guess Demetrius was asking him, you know, what was wrong? How come he's over here all by himself? And he says he just wanted to chill. He just wanted to chill for a minute. Maybe he's overwhelmed. Who knows? Okay, next we see Clifton and Joy. And he gives her a compliment. I don't like Clifton, but he gives compliments. You know? Um, 
Clifton and Joy, they flirt with each other. Nastily with each other. I didn't like that flirt. The flirting was inappropriate to me. I didn't like it. In her confessional, Joy um, talks about their sexual connection. The sexual connection between her and Clifton. <clears throat> then we see her smack him on the butt. And then they walk off together um, with their arms around each other. <clears throat> next, um, the next thing happened was Tommy came in. And he's wearing two shirts. He's wearing a sweater, turtleneck. And a checkered flannel shirt with four pockets. He think he is so fly. <laughs> anyway, he tells them that it's the end of the rope and one of the ladies. It's, he tells them it's the end of the rope for one of these one of the ladies. And at this point in the show, I'm just right watching the show and taking notes. I have not seen the ending, so I don't know. I had, didn't know who went home. But this is my prediction at this time while I'm watching the show. I think AP is going home. The reason I think she was going home is because she didn't connect with um, Clifton. She told him he reminded her of the brother when they went on a date. That's a no-no right there and there. We know that they didn't connect. And then we saw her talking to Demetrius this episode. <laughs> he wasn't interested in her at all. So that's why I think AP is the one going home. And she's new, so nobody really... It's not like she was there from the very first beginning, like um, Ace, you know, and Precious. So, you know, even though Ace and Precious, I don't think anybody is vibing with them, but they've been there from the very beginning, so people like them, you know? But AP, nobody... She really don't know anybody, and she's not vibing with anybody, so that's why I think she's going home. I really want Joy to go home, because Joy is not ready for love. She just wants to find somebody who can she, she can hang out with when she's in town or whatever. So Tommy takes the men inside. And he's sitting down talking to them. But he loves him some Wiley. He asks Wiley how um he asks Wiley first who was he feeling. Wiley said he had a really good date with Christina. He basically said they were vibing. He said a whole bunch of stuff, but I got out of that that he was vibing. They were vibing. Paul said, <laughs> Paul is such an ass. Paul said, um, Christina is nice. He said he liked her. He said she has a really good spirit. He said she told him that she dated a lot of older guys. And older guys were her speed. And he said her vibe was good. So... Paul said that in order to put Wiley in his place to show him that she's not feeling you, she's feeling me, I'm the older guy and she's feeling me. He did that to, um, you know, let Wiley know that psh, she don't want you, she want me. She date older guys. He's an ass. He shouldn't have done that. I think that was a bitchy move. Anyway, Eric said that he was feeling the Kia. He said they had an instant connection. Um, Donovan said the Kia. He was feeling the Kia. He said that she had an aura about her. Demetra said Sabrina. That, that's who he's vibing with. Who's he's, he's feeling. He said they vibe on a level that can't. He said they vibe on a level that you just can't um, explain. He said they have an unwritten chemistry. Okay. Tori said mostly. He would say he is vibing with Sabrina. He said Sabrina is his number one. And then when they showed Demetrius, Demetrius said in his confessional, may the best may the best man win. And I think he said, and I'm that man, or some 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 mess like that. And I just don't think either of them would, you know, would make a good match for her. Anywho, Clifton said he is feeling Carmen, which shocked me. Because when he met her, he said her blue eyes was freaking him out. And um, she reminded him of baby Jesus. And that night, they were on a group date. And he went over to Carmen and told Carmen that that new girl, I'm not feeling her. Mm -mm, no. And now he's saying that she's his number one. That's crazy. So he said he's feeling Carmen. He said they hang out. Um, They hang out great and talk great is what he said, I think. 
And then he said he's also feeling joy. He said they have a natural organic connection. Okay, what's who is next? I guess he just had a change of heart about um Carmen. She wasn't wearing her um eyes this um episode, so maybe she decided not to wear her eyes. Maybe he talked to her about the eyes and she's not wearing the eyes anymore. I don't know. Anyway, Laverne said he he is feeling ace and joy. We know he's not feeling no ace. I don't know why every week he says he's feeling ace. I think they're probably related or they just, they're, they're friends and they decided they were going to have each other's back. I don't know, but he's not feeling no ace. We don't see them talking. We don't see them together. Nothing. But that doesn't mean because we don't see it. That doesn't mean um, they're not. Hanging out, but I really don't think he's feeling any ace. He likes joy. Ace and joy's personality is two different type of personality. Why would he be feeling ace anyway? I think he's lying. I think they're either related to each other or they're friends, and they decided to have each other's back. He said joy is him. He says she's high energy, and Clifton did not like that. He did not like when Laverne said that joy is him. In his confessional, Clifton said, nah, brah, she is me. <laughs> so now we have two guys fighting over one girl. We had, um, before we had, um, Nikia and Carmen fighting over Eric. Now we have Clifton and, um, Laverne fighting over joy. Okay. Um, Tommy asked them who they were not feeling. And Donovan said he's not feeling precious. He said he did not see a future with her. And Clifton said precious also. He said he tried to connect with her, but didn't see a future with her. Paul said Sabrina. He's not feeling Sabrina because remember that episode they went out and she, he asked her, do you see us together? And she said, no. He said, um, <clears throat> he said, um, she only see him as a friend and she, I'm glad she told him the truth. She told him the straight up truth. Serena is my girl. She's, she's the one I want to see win. But there's nobody there for her. I think maybe Clifton would be good for her. But Clifton is all strung out over joy. Anywho. Um, Laverne said Sabrina. He's not feeling Sabrina and the Kia. And the reason he's not feeling them is because they're not all over him. He wants girls who are constantly over him and flirting nasty with him. Like Joy is. So he said he's not feeling Sabrina, he's not feeling the Kia. He said they, they give him no vibe and they're, they're no fun and they're not romantic. That's because they're not up his butt trying to, you know, get his attention. They don't need to get his attention. Anywho, Clifton said he does not have a connection with AP. Because she's, you know, she compares, she compared him to the brother, to her brother. Eric said AP, he's not, he doesn't have a connection with AP. Um, he said there's no connection there. And Tommy told them that somebody has to go out there and tell um, them whose journey is ending tonight. He said usually he does it, but he's not doing it when I'm going to do it. And right away, Paul is scared to death. He's like, I'm not doing it. Mm -mm, I'm not doing it. So they all gather outside. And Tommy chooses Demetrius to deliver the bad news to the ladies. Demetrius tells AP to step forward. Then he tells Precious to step forward. And then he went off. And I was so disappointed. I want to know what happened. And I guess I can go online and find out, but I'm just gonna wait for the next um um for next week to find out. But I'm pretty sure AP went out, went went home. I wouldn't think Precious would go because Precious flirts with them and they like that, even though she her flirting is disgusting, and she's been there since day one. They don't know AP, so I think they'll send home AP. Maybe they'll send them both home. Who cares? They just send three people home: Precious, AP, and Joy. <laughs> and uh, anyway. This is the end of our review slash recap. I will be back next week with another review. Princess on a pillow here. Thank you so very much for watching. Bye.